if you remember uh, in the last session we were talking about uh, strategy in the context of marketing and we use the analogy of uh, strategy as a journey from location A to location B. Applying it to marketing strategy we often talk about that it is actually from a position A going to position B and we define this position A that this is actually at a certain time whenever we are starting our planning at the time T 0 we have a position which we say let us call it P 0 and we want to go to a desired position which we can within a certain frame of time. So, we can say that this is T 1 and uh, this is P 1. So, P 0 is our current position and P 1 is our intended or desired position or this is what we, act, we can call is our strategic journey. And as I explained in the previous session that this is never actually a very linear progression from position A to position B. There will always be number of evolutions, number of uncertainties, situational dynamics and therefore, as marketing strategists we have to talk about and plan about many different alternatives, uh, many different variations. Uh, if then uh, if this happens then what do we do and so on. These are all part of our uh, strategic marketing uh, planning and so on. This is what uh, we will be discussing in today's session and the for the next uh, few sessions. Now, I was also mentioning in the last session that it is very important for us to be brutally honest, to be very sincere when we try to assess at what is our current position. Because if we do not do this analysis well, if we are not completely totally brutally honest and sincere to assess our current position, then uh, we will often make uh, wrong uh, strategies with respect to the implementability of that strategy. So, there are very seldom there are good strategies, uh, bad strategies, uh, but most often uh, strategies fail due to bad implementation. So, it is better to be clear about where we are, what are our current strengths and weaknesses before we actually try to look at the opportunities which will take us or for which we want to go to this intended uh, changed position. One of the things I was talking about in the last session towards the end is that about to be brutally honest, we have to understand that market share is defined by the unit sales of firm A divided by unit sales of all the competitors in the market A, B, C, etcetera, 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 right. However, we should not forget that which market are we talking about? When we are talking about this market share, it is very important to define that it is share of which market and in that context I talk to you about two, I often call it TAM 1 and TAM 2. So, it is the total addressable market and it is the, the next is total addressed market. At any point of time, if we remember the ANSOF matrix, then we have a situation if this is on this side existing market and new market and existing product and new product then usually this is where we are, right? existing product, a basket of existing products being offered to an existing market. Our strategy is, our journey is about either going here or going there 
or going here. And we discussed briefly the different risks and rewards associated with all these different journeys. But at the moment, let us understand that this existing market which we are serving is the market which we are addressing today. And most often, this Y, which is the addressed market, the addressed market of today is actually a subset, a fraction of the total addressable market. If you remember in the previous session, we were discussing about uh, a company marketing shampoos in the southern Indian market, right. Now, it may be a very dominant player in southern India, but the market, addressable market is not only the market that it is addressing, maybe Tamil Nadu, Kerala and uh, Andhra Pradesh, but it might be leaving out in its calculation the entire country which theoretically or even almost practically it can serve and that will be the whole the all India market which is the total addressable market. We are not even talking about the Asian market or the global market and so on. And usually therefore, y by x is less than 1, it is just a fraction of the total addressable market and our marketing strategy is to try to make it same. That means, we are able to address the entire market. So, obviously, if our market share, the market in which we are today of this existing market that we are serving today, our market share may be 55 percent, but if we take the total addressable market, then it might drop to 15 percent, right. And this is one honest assessment we must do, because it may often happen that we are very happy in our existing market in our little niche, but the market that is outside this market often may be growing at a pace which is much faster than the market that you are addressing today. Because as we were discussing that may be the uh, tier 2, tier 3 cities, the villages in northern India are now opening up faster to the concept of using shampoo and therefore, that market may be expanding faster and therefore, when you are look looking at your market share, then you not only should look at therefore, your addressed market, you should look at the addressable market, you should look at the uh, growth rate uh, of the two markets and then understand that where exactly you stand with respect to your potential, right. So, therefore, if this is the potential that you want to realize your uh, T 1 P 1, the intended position at the end of your strategic plan period, then it is very important to understand uh, it in the context of the total addressable market and uh, the growth rate differential between what you are addressing today and the rest of the market. Another important point is here that two companies A and B may have the same market share of, of the same address market. Maybe both of them are in southern India and both of them or maybe this company is uh, an all India pan India company and, and this is a southern Indian company and they both have 30 percent market share. So, this is a primarily south Indian company and this is a pan or a national all India player, right. And in your market, in the southern Indian market, both have now uh, 30 percent market share. But this is not the end. To understand our T 0, P 0 position, to understand where we are today really, we should look at also the composition of tribes of customers, which is giving us this 30 percent share. If company A within this 30 percent if they have this 15 percent of this 30 percent is say high profit customers, 15 percent is switchable or unprofitable customers and loyal customers are 70 percent. 
And compared to that, suppose this new pan-Indian entrant in the South Indian market, which has quickly uh, a, been in offensive and has acquired 30 percent market share, because of that strategy they have followed, maybe their high profit customer uh, content is only 5 percent switchable or unprofitable customers constitute 50 percent and maybe only 45 percent are where they have been able to develop some form of loyalty. So, obviously, this basket resulting to this same market share is much better than this basket resulting to the same 30 percent market share. Okay? So, this is uh, a short discussion to understand that when we are assessing our current position and when we are trying to plan for an intended strategic objective position, it is very important to be sincere, honest and deeply analytical to understand our uh, current position and I, I, I showed some simple issues with respect to market share and, and, and uh, try to explain. We will see in much greater depth when we discuss some of the cases uh, about this strategic uh, analysis, position analysis, uh, kind of tools that we can understand in uh, which, which allows us to understand in depth our current position. I will now uh, get back to uh, a little deeper discussion on the concept of SWOT that was introduced in the previous session, the strength, weakness, opportunity, threat uh, matrix. Okay. So, we will now get into a little uh, deeper discussion. Uh, we will take up a case and try to understand that how do we apply this uh, tool uh, SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat analysis and how it can give us uh, a sort of a marketing plan, uh, this journey that A to B that we talked about, that how do we understand where we are today uh, and, and where we need to go. Let us take this uh, example of a very well known uh, shoe company footwear company perhaps the uh, oldest surviving brand uh, in this domain in India uh, uh, which is say Bata. Right? Now, what are Bata strengths? Uh, obviously, you will say that uh, well known as a brand existing customer base, because there are many people around the country who have been using uh, Bata shoes maybe for last 50 years and, uh, and that often they will use this as their first choice. And also again a very important point that they have existing distribute distribution chain. Similarly, you can also say they have an existing uh, supply chain, uh, long standing suppliers, um, long standing relations with them and they have a uh, good manufacturing base. Um, expertise in this domain. So, these are all strengths. Now, very interestingly, sometimes your strengths are also the flip side of your weakness, because, because Bata is a very well known brand and there are people who are using Bata shoes for 50 years. For the children, for, for the children of these 50 year old uh, parents may be the weakness is the brand is perceived 
as kind of old and not trendy. Trendy. Also, maybe there is a certain set structure of a company which is several decades old and they may not be very uh, this rem uh, remember this is just this is not the real situation we are talking about we are just building a scenario so i'm not saying that a bata is not tech savvy uh, uh, with respect to web marketing but say let's assume that they are not uh, web savvy that means they do because they have a very large physical distribution chain, they are not uh, so uh, focused on an e-marketing or electronic marketing or e-business uh, channel. Also, their weakness can be that uh, they have an increasing churn rate. What we mean by that is that there may be a number of uh, their existing customers who are uh, now allured by all these uh, smart looking, different looking uh, so called sports shoes and casual shoes and uh, many other uh, attractive positioning that are now in the market, companies coming from all over the world, uh, companies like Nike, Adidas uh, and so on and so forth. And in certain way therefore, there are people who are now uh, feeling the need of having a pair of shoes for jogging, having a pair of shoes for their tennis. Uh, session lessons, uh, having a separate pair of shoes for their golfing and so on and so forth. Maybe uh, people have uh, a need of uh, more uh, funky party shoes and there are therefore, different companies who are positioning themselves as uh, key players in these uh, different types of niche. As you can well imagine, that if we draw the product life cycle of uh, shoes, then for customers who have been buying shoes for last 50 years uh, in metros, in urban locations, maybe the market is already kind of a approaching, uh, may not be declining because our population is increasing. But on the other hand, the market may be at a initial growth stage in, in, in the rural market. So, so, there are different markets have different characteristics, but let us at the moment focus on uh, say the urban metro market where Bata has been marketing uh, for last several decades. New opportunities that one can look at. One of the opportunities that you can actually see in uh, uh, Bata uh, shops, their outlets cross selling. What does it mean? That means that when people come uh, to buy shoes, uh, it is quite likely they will buy polish, shoe polish, they will buy socks. These are all adjacent products, but it is also now quite possible to sell uh, say uh, rucksacks, school bags. Uh, luggage, uh, because they are associated with uh, this particular uh, basket of products. So, it is quite possible to cross sell that means, to sell to the same customer who is coming into the shop to buy shoes, um, convince them to buy also something like a uh, back nice looking funky uh, backpack or uh, certain special type of insoles or 
socks for different occasions and so on and so forth. So, there are cross selling opportunities. There are also opportunities for new markets like markets in uh, rural markets for example. And because of this problem that they are considered as a kind of an old oldish brand. So, in a way therefore, this can also be an opportunity of uh, alliances or co-branding. That means, Bata can take products from smaller manufacturers who are making the so called trendy products and have either a joint brand name or create a new brand name. So, there is there are possibilities of utilizing the strength of Bata's distribution chain to do this cross selling utilizing products coming from alliance partners and co brands. Now, what are the threats? Now, this is opportunity right. Threats T. So, the threats may be changing customer profile. As you know that uh, the percentage of young buyers in the marketplace is now continuously on the rise and it will continue to rise for the next maybe 30 years in India. This is what we call often the demographic dividend of India that there are more because of our huge population, because of the birth rate and so on. We are to currently in a situation that in the next over the next 20, 30 years, there will be a huge number 100 million or more young people in the age group of 20 to 35 will be entering into the market as buyers. Now, this changing customer profile means that they have, they may not exactly be excited by a brand which is considered kind of a 50 year old brand. They are looking for a brand which represents them, right. And it is also possible that the market will new competitors and new products. If you actually uh, look at the design of shoes in today's market, you will immediately realize that today what is sold as a shoe would not have been sold as a you know would not have been considered. Today there are so many variants uh, which are uh, blends of what could have been I earlier called a uh, you know household uh, uh, domestic or indoor use or garden slipper and that is now can be blended and it can become your. Uh, you know open shoes for morning walk and so on. Anyway, the main point is that there are many new varieties coming, many new competitors coming into this market. So, we have now a sort of a map that there are certain strengths for this brand for this company Bata. There are certain opportunities, there are certain threats and there are certain weaknesses. And now, this is the important part that we can therefore, develop various kinds of marketing actions by combining S and O, W and O, threat 
and O and weakness and threat. Okay. So, we often call it S O strategy, W O strategy, T O strategy and W T strategy. Let us take uh, W T weakness and threat. What are the weaknesses? That there are the brand is perceived as an old brand, it is not trendy, if the brand is not web savvy, the company is not web savvy, there is not enough uh, activity on the for internet marketing and there is an increasing churn rate and threats are related because there are changing customer profile, new competitors, new products and so on. Okay. So, what does it mean? What can we do? So, we can say that we can have an aggressive partnering with e business companies who sell all kinds of products uh, on the internet. There are say uh, you know you know so many of them. Internationally there are people like Amazon, there are people like eBay and today fortunately in India we have a large number of very successful young uh, companies in this domain and making this uh, e market for consumer products, products like even shoes. Uh, apparels, they have created a vibrant marketplace on the internet. So, Bata could actually therefore, go for some aggressive partnering with uh, these different uh, e-marketers, right? Flipkart or uh, Mian Mintra or uh, Jabong and so on. Similarly, they could actually uh, maybe acquire smaller companies. Now, these are all alternatives, one will have to do further analysis that which one is better uh, at this particular point of time. And we can create uh, different new customer engagement strategy. using social marketing, uh, social networks and it could also try to reposition itself in the eyes of the newly emerging customers as a very socially responsible green company. It can create a whole new uh, position for itself in that domain that how they are actually recreating themselves for the environmentally responsible, socially responsible uh, new world. You can see older companies like ITC uh, in India have very successfully uh, deployed this in their as part of their marketing strategy. Uh, we can discuss this at a later date. In the same way, you should be able to develop uh, a list of stuff uh, that you can do in the combination of SO that means, where you can combine your uh, strength and opportunity. So, give me some examples of uh, what you can do uh, in this area. For example, we have already looked at this right that there is a because of your strength in uh, existing distribution chain and since there is opportunity for cross selling, you can actually create additional 
an adjacent product introduction. So, you can expand and this is what we call the we discussed in the previous session. This will be a very good wallet share strategy that means, you already have a loyal customer base. They come into your um, uh, uh, shops at, at your different outlets, they come into your outlets for you know twice, thrice in a year during the festive season or during the other gifting season and so on. And at that point of time, uh, you can utilize your existing relationship and, and, and also market to that customer base uh, luggage, traveling luggage, uh, associated products, adjacent products and so on. So, what I would like you to do is take this as your uh, uh, exercise and I would like to hear from you uh, that how what would you like to do and uh, W O domain and T O domain and in this quadrant S O quadrant expand and give me a full picture. Uh, so, that we can discuss it in a subsequent session. Uh, I would like to take up uh, another interesting thing that you can do uh, to uh, use an understanding of the market share that we did here and develop from that some marketing objectives and uh, develop some action agenda. And uh, to do that, we will look at a very simple chart that let us say in this case let us take uh, cars, automobiles, passenger cars and suppose there we have three competitors and we take buying criteria, right. Let us say price, fuel efficiency, style, service network. Now, be careful here that these criteria that which are the important buying, buying criteria, you should decide through extensive discussions with the customers. Because what we would also like to do is assign weight and we can do that you know on a scale of 1 to 10 and so maybe after talking to a large number of customers in across uh, northern India in tier 2 and tier 3 cities, you find that price is very important. So, price has 9, fuel efficiency may be 8, style may be 7 and service network may be 8 in terms of importance in the eyes of the customer. right? And now, these are the three competing brands, competing companies say and suppose this company A uh, is very competitive in price. So, suppose they score 9, the company B is quite competitive, but may be not that competitive. So, there may be 8. And this is another company which is newly come into the market, very famous all over the world, but their price is they are a bit pricey. So, maybe their score will be 7. Fuel efficiency uh, maybe A is 8, 
b is 8 and suppose c is 6, but style wise maybe c is 9, they are globally famous and uh, b may be uh, style wise 7 and a may be 6. Okay. This simple matrix that you have in front of you is a very interesting tool that can be used to uh, understand that what could possibly be market share of these A, B and C uh, in this market as because all three companies might have launched their products in this market over the last six months and you are trying to say trying to project that what will be the market share one year from now and this is an interesting tool to be able to do that. So, I would like you to note down this matrix and use this and tell me how you will be able to do it. I will discuss it in the following session or uh, uh, that how exactly this will be used. Okay. So, we were discussing uh, this uh, imaginary case to find a marketing strategy for three companies launching their cars in tier 2, tier 3 cities of northern India, trying to assess what could be their market share a year or two years later. This is very important because if you imagine that you can win a market share of 50 percent and, uh, and deploy resources accordingly and you actually land, land up with a market share of 30 percent or 25 percent, then you would have wasted lot of marketing resources, companies precious financial resources and you could go uh, quite wrong if the estimate goes even further away from the reality. So, to, to understand again this is another way of understanding that where are you today or what is your logical position in the market. And obviously, if we want to understand what is the logical position in the market, the best way to assess that is to talk to customers, talk to distributors, talk to your other uh, possible partners, observe your customers reaction to competition's products and also look at how competitors are positioning themselves. These are all part of intelligence gathering for creating your strategic marketing plan. So, let us take uh, this example of uh, say small cars uh, being launched 1000 cc to maybe 1500 cc cars or maybe in the around 1000 cc um, like engine capacity cars and we have these three competitors A, B, C and this is a new entrant in the Indian market, very famous for its styling and so on. So, we find that A is very competitive in price, B is almost equally competitive, C is not that competitive. In fuel efficiency, uh, A is very competitive, so is B, but C is not that competitive, but in style C is world famous and uh, B is uh, kind of better than A in this respect. 
and in service network this is an old established brand relatively older brand and it has a very good service network. So, uh, they have scored 8 out of 10, B is 7 and C is a new entrant their service network is still quite poor and so they may be they are not that good. So, they have got 5 and we have earlier assessed with discussion with customers that the relative importance of these 4 factors are this 9, 8, 7, 8. Now, if we multiply the score of each company on each of these criterion, uh, so we get 81, 8 into 8 64, 7 into 6 42 and 8 into 8 64. In the same way, we get all these other scores of 72, 64, 49 and 9 into 7 is 63, 8 into 6 is 48, 7 into 9 is 63, 8 into 5 is 40. We add up and we get therefore, now 251, 261, 214. If we add up across, then we get 726 I think. Uh, Yes. So, what we do is therefore, this total possible score is in a way this is a proxy of the uh, total market uh, in the minds of the customer. And therefore, from this we can derive dividing 251 by 726 that with this new threat coming in a very stylish international competitor coming in. A uh, certain market share will be lost by A and B, and, uh, and, and then th this will be the risk. Now, obviously, as you can see here, we get several interesting inputs for our marketing strategy formulation here. Like this company C, they can see that they are currently at 30 percent and expanding the service network, right. So, this is their weakness and opportunity combination. That means, if they now develop alliance with independent automobile service providers, automotive repair service providers or they buy out uh, some of these prominent uh, players who are not already uh, captive to A or B. So, just by improving this number, which means if they can improve their in the minds of the customer perception about their service network, if they can make that improve that to this level 8, right, then this will become 64 and this will become a game changing. So, just by simply improving here or on the other hand, if A can significantly improve their st its styling, bring up new products which have you know have winning style, it can change its so position, it can try to expand. So, increasing your market share in your served market is not a you, you cannot achieve it just by you know going out there just by advertising more just by exhibiting more and it is quite dangerous to try to increase your market share usually by trying to reduce your price because that can lead to price war and so on we will perhaps discuss that in much greater depth when we take up some actual examples. And uh, so, here we can see that the simple metrics can tell us about possible market share without even getting into the real numbers, because often the real numbers it is very difficult to gather the real numbers. In, in case of cars, it is not difficult because these numbers are published 
uh, on a regular basis by the industry association. And, uh, but there are many other products where this is this may not be very easy to find. Say for example, number of soaps currently being sold in across 15 cities of northern India and how that each brand or each type of soap how it is uh, uh, how the market is growing or how the market is responding because it is a new market as far as some of the luxury soaps are concerned. Right? Now, you can see the same type of list of uh, criteria can be developed through extensive discussions with the customers, observing the customers. So, discussions, uh, surveys, uh, uh, observations, all of these will give you this list of criteria. Then you should actually have similarly discussions, observations, uh, experiments to understand these relative importance and then you can find this course and this course will tell you if you are company C, what are your weakness areas and what are the opportunities and therefore, what you can do by combining uh, and what are the actions you can take therefore, uh, in terms of market share growth, uh, in terms of winning customers away from the competition what you need to do. And uh, you can also therefore, realize certain limitations like for example, it may be uh, it is possible perhaps this 5 to go to 8, but it may be extremely difficult to take this 9 to 10 or it may be fuel efficiency which is 6 derived out of the engine and sometimes these two factors may be trade off because of the styling it may be difficult to put in a very fuel efficient engine. right? So, one has to also look up these trade offs and limitations and from that we can understand that what is our market share today and what is really possible, what is really possible, what is pragmatic to uh, in terms of our ambition and, uh, and, and therefore, you can develop your marketing budget accordingly and uh, you can understand your um, what we call marketing cost versus marketing benefit analysis. Now, to get to uh, some of these cost uh, benefit analysis or what we call return on our marketing spend. That means, the total number of rupees that we will be spending for our marketing effort, uh, what do we get out of that. Obviously, as we have seen through this analysis today and also when we did the SWOT metrics uh, uh, earlier, the SWOT metrics that we did that it is not practical always to think uh, or it is not rational to think that today we are at 20 percent and we can become uh, 70 percent over the next two years. Uh, that, that may be a dream, but that may not be a valid marketing strategic ambition. And uh, we need at this stage some deeper understanding of some fundamental financial concepts, which you must be knowing because this is an advanced level course and just as before taking this course you would have done an introduction to marketing course. In the same way, I am sure most of you have already done an introduction to corporate finance and finance and accounts uh, course. However, uh, just uh, so that we all walk together and we are on the same page, uh, we need to discuss some uh, of those financial concepts, cost benefit concepts, particularly a deeper understanding of cost 
is uh, will be very important for some of the further strategic analysis that we would like to do. So, that will be the topic of our next session, the understanding of financial management fundamentals, which are important building blocks for marketing strategy. Thank you.